Hi, welcome back. A new article just came out in Puget Sound Business Journal, and I have to share it with you because it talks about what you should know as a property owner or investor in Greater Seattle Real Estate Market in 2024. So what I'm going to do today is to take a deep dive into this article and highlight some of the important trends that are happening right now. So let's go. The title of this article is Seattle housing market is an ideal for buyers or sellers, which I found really interesting because we currently only have about 1.2 months of supply. And if you've been following my channel, you will know that a balanced market is between four to six months. So technically, we're definitely a seller's market. And to say that the market is ideal for sellers is a pretty intriguing statement. So let's read on. Oh, by the way, this article is only available through a paid subscription. If you're not a subscriber of Puget Sound Business Journal, it is a wonderful publication for people who want to be in the know. I've been a long-term subscriber, and I really can speak from experience. It benefited me immensely. So with that said, I want to thank today's sponsor, Puget Sound Business Journal. No, 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 I'm just kidding. So let's read on. Next, he says, economists expect the Seattle area housing market to reset as lower inventory and higher mortgage rates counterbalance activity. In my opinion, this is definitely a very accurate description of what's happening right now. Due to the rate locking effect, housing inventory in 2023 has been about 30% less compared to historical levels. Rate locking effect is the term describing property owners holding on to their properties because they are unwilling to lose their existing low mortgage rates. So sellers, in other words, are essentially locked in in their homes by their current low interest rates. And then, which in turn, it lowers the available homes for sale. And on the demand side, higher mortgage rates definitely reduce the demand by making homes less affordable. When we have reduced supply and reduced demand, the result is pretty astonishing. In 2023, we actually had the lowest number of home sales in the past 30 years in the U.S. history. Remember the subprime mortgage crisis and the housing crash of 2008? Back then, the sky was falling, banks were failing, people were losing their homes, foreclosure was everywhere. And even then, there were higher number of home sales. And that's pretty nuts to think about. Then the article goes on saying, and that means both buyers and sellers need to adjust. For sellers, what I'm seeing right now is there's much more of a sense of urgency compared to before. Back when mortgage rates were just around 3 to 4%, Sellers were in an absolute dominant position because it seems the housing prices will just continue to climb. But now, there's much more uncertainty in the economy and the outlook isn't looking as bright. So sellers today are definitely more realistic and more motivated to make a deal. And the next thing just blows my mind. Do you know that the typical home buyer will have to spend 60% of their income on housing costs in the Seattle area compared to just 38% for the typical US home buyer? As a real estate broker for 20 plus years, I didn't even know about this. What makes it even more interesting is that when a home buyer is trying to get a mortgage, the lender would typically limit the loan amount by calculating what's called debt to income ratio, which is typically around 43% to as high as 50% by most lenders. In other words, the lender will only issue a loan if it's estimated principal, interest, property tax, insurance, and HOA dues do not exceed 50% of the borrower's gross income, which means this 60% figure in the article must take into account things like utilities, home maintenance like landscaping, or repairs like when something breaks down. I think this number is an important reminder that when you're deciding a budget for your next home, you must budget for other hidden costs that comes with home ownership. And guess what? When your property value goes up, what happens to a property tax? It goes up too, right? And how about insurance costs or HOA dues? They almost always go up. So for example, I own a condo in downtown Seattle. And when I bought it in 2013, the dues was only $580. And I just got my monthly HOA bill. Guess how much it is now? It's $1,160. So even though the mortgage payments are fixed, if you got a fixed rate mortgage, the other costs like property tax, insurance, maintenance do not stay the same. So when calculating the price of your next home, please be sure to take into account the hidden cost. Now, according to this table, annual appreciation has slowed substantially from 2021 to 2023. 
it was 17.1% in 2021, then it became only 5.7% in 2022, and almost flat at 0.9% in 2023. Now take a look at this. Zillow forecasted home values in the Seattle metro area will appreciate an analyzed rate of 3.7% in 2024. And that's huge, right? Because the annual appreciation rate was only 0.9% in 2023. So what that means is that Zillow thinks our market will heat up in 2024 despite of the current unaffordability crisis. And remember in my last month's video about real estate prediction for 2024, the link will be posted in the description below. I think any relief brought by lower interest rate, which is expected this year, will be offset by increasing home prices. And I think this forecast puts that in perspective. Then the article says, despite some improvements during the pandemic, new constructions lacks in Seattle. Seattle metro area had 15,676 new private residential building permits authorized between January and November. And that's 9,396 fewer permits, which is a 37% drop compared to the first 11 months of 2022. When I speak with our developer clients, the feedback that I got is that you had already become harder to build when COVID hit because the labor and material costs shut up drastically. And now on top of all that, the financing costs are through the roof because the interest rates on construction loans are approaching 10%. And that's why a lot of builders are holding off on starting new projects, which definitely explains the 37% drop referenced in the article. And not just that, one thing I want to point out for you here is that 59.96% of the permits were for five plus units. For single family homes, it's only 35.09%. Therefore, in terms of product type, single family homes are poised to continue to surpass the multifamily sector like condominiums in price appreciation this year. Finally, the article moves on to talk about the rental market and concludes that single family rents are up by 4% annually. And check this out, 27% compared to the pre-pandemic averages. Whereas multifamily rents have risen only about 2% year over year and overall 14% throughout the pandemic. So it goes to show that single family homes have not just outperformed multifamily in price appreciation, but also in rent upside. So as we discussed earlier, this trend is projected to continue well into 2024 with nearly 60% of the new housing permits being the multifamily sector. So that's going to bump up the supply more in the multifamily sector versus single family homes. Thank you for watching and I hope you find this information helpful. This is TC Wu with Seattle Real Estate. Follow my channel for more content like this.